Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the flash object properties. So I'm going to select my flash object and pull out my properties pane here, and we'll take a look at the properties in the properties pane this time. Okay, so we've got the same typical stuff we expect from any object, such as the ability to name our object here. So I'll name it my flash, as well as we've got in the attributes area here the enabled and visibility states that we have for the other objects that we've looked at, as well as the position and sizing so we can numerically resize or reposition our objects right here. The one thing that you'll notice right away that's a lot different from the other objects we've looked at is in the actions area here. Instead of reacting to mouse events, now the Flash movie reacts to FS commands, and those are commands that are embedded within the Flash movie, and typically you would do this in Macromedia Flash or Swish or some other Flash authoring application and they basically fire on a frame or on some type of an event from within the Flash movie and this allows your autoplay application to react to those events. Similarly, autoplay can speak to your Flash object through a series of actions, so basically this gives you two-way data communication. We'll take a look at uh, some of that in the examples tutorial. But the main things that we want to look at here for the Flash object are the unique attributes that you have here in the properties pane, such as these. Okay, so we'll look at the, the auto start and loop functions first. Now these are pretty self-explanatory. Obviously, depending on the content that you're deploying via Flash, you're going to want to experiment with these and see which settings work best for you. If you're deploying video content that has a hold frame, for example, on the beginning or the end, you may not want to auto start or loop your movie. So play around with those and see what works best. Basically, they're true-false, and it's easy to set these and test them. Okay, we've got an alignment option here. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense looking at our flash object as it is now, but if we go ahead and resize this, the alignment object becomes more relevant. As you can see here, when I resized it, the object from the um, flash object ended up going to the bottom of the bounding box area. Okay, so that's basically what is um, denoted by this alignment pull-down menu here. So if we set it to default, for example, it goes to the center. If we set it to top, it goes to the top, and so forth. So we can basically set our alignment option here. Now, this becomes particularly relevant in the case where we may be resizing something dynamically at runtime, or where the colors are, are going to be in some type of a conflict. Now let's take a quick look at the color option here. When we've scaled an, ob an object like that, and we've got it aligned to one side, you'll see that there's an area here of matte color, in this case blue, which is undesirable. Here you can override that by checking the override background color option, and then setting the color here. In our case, we'll take white, since that's the color of our project page. As you can see, that really uh, cleans that up, and it makes it more usable. Okay, now, going back to the options up here, the alignment options, Okay, so I'm going to set that to default, so it's going to go to the center of our bounding box, and we're going to take a look at the scaling options here, because those are also relevant to the bounding box. As you can see, there's a scaling mode pull-down menu here. It's got three options. Show all, that's what we're set to here. That's where it's going to show the whole movie, and it's going to scale that to the uh, minimum size of your bounding box. So, for example, it's going to show the whole movie no matter what and whatever the minimum size of your bounding box is, that's going to be the maximum size of the movie. So it's going to fit it in there any way it can, but it's going to make sure to show the whole movie. No border, as you can see here, shows it at full scale, and it just cuts off where the bounding box is. So it's basically cropping that original movie. Exact fit will scale your movie, and it will distort it to fit into wherever the bounding box area is. So as you can see, there's a variety of options here, and certain ones will work better for you. Depends if you're going to be resizing your objects at runtime, and so forth. <coughs> so I'm going to leave mine set to show all. And actually, I'm going to pull this out a little bit more, so it's more obvious, and center it on my stage. Now let's take a look at the quality option next. Actually, here I'm going to scale my object up quite a bit, so that you guys can really notice when I change the quality setting. There we go. Now, the quality setting, particularly if you have a lot of text, it's going to affect what you see on your screen, and it's going to affect the anti-aliasing level that's applied by the Flash player. So let's go ahead and set our quality level to low. As you can see right away, the corners of that cube become quite grainy, etc. If we had a series of text on there, you would really see it a lot, because the anti-aliasing would be not applied at the same level as it was here at Auto High. So there's a variety of settings here, low, high, auto-low, and auto high. 
and these are going to react with your Flash movie depending on um, how it was authored and so forth. So I encourage you to go through and experiment with those. They're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, typically, you're going to want to leave it on auto high, though, especially for uh, these type of applications where file size isn't as much of a factor as it would be on the web, for example. And so you're not really worried about that delivery benefit that you might get from using low quality on some stuff. Okay? Here you've got an um, option to use your device font. So if you want to use the device font, and that's the font on the person, on the user's system, to try and economize your file size or to try and economize what fonts you have to embed within your application, you can uh, apply that. But typically you'll leave that set to false, or typically I do anyhow. But again, it's one of those things where you have to um, experiment with it and see which setting works best for you. But that's basically what that does, is it allows you to um, use in your Flash movie the user's device font. So for example, if you're using Arial font or something that's common to everybody's application. But if you're experienced with Flash, you know that the device fonts actually act quite different than embedded fonts. So you'll probably want to embed your fonts as is typical practice in Flash. And we've got for our last option to look at here the context menu. Now this is a full standard option, so it's a, a two-way option. And we're going to go ahead and just look at the different ones. So we'll go ahead and preview F5 with a standard <coughs> context menu here. And that means when I right-click on the movie, it's going to give me this type of menu here. Okay, so that's a standard menu. It gives you the settings and the about menu. And I'm going to go ahead and change that now to be a full context menu. And we're going to go ahead and preview that. And when I right click, now you see a full context menu. So you see now that it's got uh, an opportunity for the user to zoom in, um, zoom out, set their quality settings, and so on and so forth, and even print the, the movie. So depending on what you're deploying, for example, if you don't want them to be able to print that movie, you might want to go ahead and deactivate that. Okay, so that's the Flash Object Properties. And we're going to go ahead now and take a look at the Flash Object Actions.